I'm glad to see our altar looking very pretty. Um, it's remarkable how many candlesticks you can find in a church when you need them. And I'd like to thank our church warden and her daughter for um, making them look so nice and shiny. Thank you. Um, however, this last week has unfortunately been um, a very dark week in many ways. Um, literally dark with the weather, with short days, uh, cloudy days. Um, also, we have seen some sad things this week. On an international level, on Wednesday, we saw the Holocaust Memorial Day. Um, and that's a time when we are forced to contemplate the full horror of what can happen when prejudice and ignorance and brutality are allowed to spiral way out of control. And again, nationally this week, we reached the point where we realized that the number of COVID-19 victims in this country had gone over 100,000. Um, I have to say, that's not something that I saw coming. Um, it's a terrible thing. Um, and locally, again on Wednesday, we had a very sad funeral for one of the younger members of our parish. Um, yet another reminder of how darkness can intrude into our lives in more ways than just this weather or the earlier hours of nightfall. But at the same time, I've been fascinated by the responses to all of these things, um, how much similarity, how much synchronicity there has been across all of these responses, because people lit candles for the Holocaust victims. People lit candles for the COVID-19 victims. And people also lit candles in memory of one of our young. People lit thousands and thousands of candles, often in the same place. I saw one church on a Sky News item that had literally carpeted the nave floor with what must have been thousands of tea lights. It was just like a sea of flame. Really, really impressive. And I don't know where that church was, but it was a really amazing sight. And I saw also that one woman in Germany had constructed a gigantic cross in her yard out of candles. That too was very, very beautiful. It was intended to be in honor of the COVID-19 victims um, internationally, but it was also, I think, a symbol of defiance in the face of a German government that has closed all of its churches. And so it does seem to be a natural human response to heartbreak and loss to light candles. It seems to be something carried really deeply within our souls, um, like a once forgotten but newly found postcard on which is glimpsed a, a picture of eternity. And so it's a really fitting thing that all this has been seen just before we celebrate the feast of the presentation in the temple or the purification of the Blessed Mary or Candlemas, whichever you prefer to call it. And we hear the story of this in this week's Gospel reading. We hear of how Mary and her child Jesus attend the temple for the purification rite. Um, the child is seen there by the elderly Simeon and the prophet Anna. And Simeon says some words as he beholds this child, words that we now call the Nunc Dimittis. Um, and these words are said every day at the evening prayer office in many denominations, according to the custom in the early church. And it is also said towards the end of a funeral, often. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. 
For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And so it's this acknowledgement of the Messiah as the light of revelation that gives us the tradition of Candlemas, a time when we bless candles, because candles are the sign of this light in the Christian tradition. When we light a candle in church, we light it to remind us of this great light of Christ. And whether people know it or not, when they light candles, as they have done in vast numbers this week, they're doing it to remind themselves that there is a greater good, a greater hope, a power that is much greater than we are, a power that can bring about change, that will bring about change, a change that is sorely needed. Everything in life is holy. All of the world is a sacrament, a sign of God's creative power and of his joy in that creation. A candle is a tiny sacramental sign of God's inspiration, a tiny reminder of his light and a hint of what is required of us. We must learn to accept that death is a part of life. It's not something separate. It's not something to be just dismissed and not talked about. Because we must die within our lives. We must die to our egotistical selves to our pride, our malice, our indignance at the supremacy of God. And this is a death within life that is preached by Jesus to Nicodemus and that we, like Nicodemus, find so hard to understand. Only by dying to our sinful selves can we seek to follow our great high priest, who became like us in order to make an atoning sacrifice for our sins and will refine us in fire and full of soap, if only we ask him to. And as we share the bread of life, whether at the altar or spiritually at home, we partake of Christ and in doing so, we become one body. And we should therefore be reminded that we are all responsible. We are collectively responsible, whether for reading and believing the wrong pamphlets in 1921 or for writing the wrong Facebook post in 2021. All these things have consequences that echo throughout all of eternity. We must remember this. And the power of Christ lies in his ability to help us to share responsibility for making things right. In giving us the strength to put everything right by following the light of the world. Who is the King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty? I said that the world is a sacrament. And as a sign of hope, it is fitting that at this time of year, we see the snowdrops appearing in the grass as if by magic, a sign of the coming sunshine, a sacrament of hope. Snowdrops are also called Mary's tapers or Candlemas bells, as Janet said, 
And that's presumably because they appear at this time of year. They are a particular flower of this time, a symbol of purity, the first high sea of spring. A bowl of snowdrops on Candlemas Day was once held to give a house the white purification in some parts of England, and the candles that we bless were lit at night, and the children were allowed to stay up until the candle had burned out. There is hope. We are capable of bringing about change. The change is needed to put aside our sinful selves, our destruction of our environment, our greed for more money, for food, for vaccines. We are capable of making that change together, of making ourselves worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us all pray for change, that we can learn from our mistakes. Let us all pray for the world to be transformed. But above all, let's try and do something about it too. Let's follow the light of Christ and do something every day, whether it's a letter, a few words, whatever it may be, however small. Let's all help to make that change for a better place in the name of the King of glory. Amen.